My wife and I have been married for six years. We met at work and instantly connected. As employees, we were discouraged from dating others in the office. So, I spent all of my time trying to make her laugh and joking with her about the other people around us. Eventually, I found a new job at a great place, and on my last day in the office I asked her out. She said yes, and we fell in love. We got married after about a year and a half of being together, and it was one of the best decisions of our lives. The pandemic happened early on in our marriage, and at first it was causing some stress. We had been used to being away from each other during the workdays, and only really seeing each other on weekends and evenings. It isn't that we didn't love each other, but we both had our own time for ourselves. The pandemic really got both of us thinking about our health. We were both relatively healthy, we ate well for the most part, and before the pandemic, we got most of our exercise from running around our respective offices. However, with the pandemic, we were very sedentary and both of us were putting on a little bit of weight. When things started to clear up, we both decided that we wanted to get a gym membership. We went together, and we had a good time focusing on this new lifestyle. On top of that, we both really loved exercising, and we could see the benefits of it fairly quickly. We started going to the gym together three or four times a week. The more we went, the more confident we were. Our membership was at a local place owned by someone we knew, so we recognized a lot of the people at the gym. There was a sense of community there that we liked. One day, while we were driving back from the gym, my wife asked me who my gym crush was. I was taken aback by the question because it seemed like a weird thing for her to ask. She assured me that she wasn't going to take it the wrong way, but she'd seen me paying attention to some of the other girls in the gym, and she was just curious. In fact, she promised to tell me hers. I thought about it for a moment, and I realized that I was confident enough in our relationship to have that conversation with her. Of course, neither of us was the only person we were attracted to. We are both human after all. As long as neither of us acted on those impulses, we were fine. I told her who mine was, we'll call her Heather. Heather went to the gym with her fiancé, and we crossed paths with both of them often. My wife confessed that her crush was Heather's fiancé, we'll call him Joe. We teased each other about it after we confessed, but it was never really something that came up again. Several months later, I was playing basketball with some friends from the neighborhood, and I landed very badly and tore a ligament in my knee. I had to go through some physical therapy alongside months of rest. During those months, I wasn't able to go to the gym with my wife. She was still going which I had no issues with whatsoever. She had been very passionate about her fitness and activity after the fact, so I was happy she was still doing it. I just wished that I could have gone with her. After the injury, I found myself in a depressive episode. I was trapped in my house for the majority of my time, and I was feeling isolated and alone, so I took up some bad habits. I put on a little bit of weight, and some of the muscle tone that I had earned over the months of going to the gym disappeared. It didn't help my depression that I could see it happening and felt helpless to stop it. I complained about the issues I was having with my body to my wife often, and she did what she could to assure me that it wasn't an issue, and she would love me no matter what. However, her actions spoke differently. It seemed like she didn't want to be around me as much. She had been laid off during the pandemic and still wasn't working. But she was out all the time running errands. On top of that, we weren't having sex. I took it as her not being attracted to me, but I didn't want to go to her and ask about that. I think a big part of me was too afraid to hear the truth. She started going to the gym more and more, and I started to realize that she was going five or six times a week, which was more than we had ever really gone. It definitely seemed like she just wanted to get away from me. Months passed, and I was done with my rest and going to physical therapy to try and get everything back to normal. When I was finally cleared to be off crutches and able to begin light exercise again, I jumped at the opportunity. My wife gladly brought me back to the gym and everybody else there seemed happy that I was back. I was friendly with just about everybody at the gym. That included Heather and Joe. My first week back, everybody, including Heather, came over to me and asked me all about my recovery and how I was feeling. I didn't notice it at the time, but Joe was steering clear of me. Looking back, after I returned to the gym, he and I hadn't had a single conversation with each other. I couldn't remember him talking to my wife either. 
Because I was still recovering, I wasn't able to go to the gym very often. I had to take it easy and made sure I was giving myself time to recuperate. I was going to the gym every other day for the most part. My wife kept going at her normal pace. I was working from home, so thankfully I was able to step out and take walks or things like that whenever I wanted to, as long as I was getting my work done. My wife told me one morning that she was going to the gym in the afternoon. It was one of my resting days, so I hadn't planned on going with her. Around lunchtime, I was feeling fidgety, like I had a lot of energy that I needed to get rid of. I figure I could take an hour and go cycle or walk on the treadmill, so I made my way over. My wife told me she was going to be there, so I was expecting to see her inside when I arrived. I looked around for her, and she was nowhere to be seen. I asked the woman at the front desk if she saw my wife, but she told me that she didn't think she'd come in yet that day. I was worried right away. I trusted my wife, and when she told me she was going to the gym, I believed her. If she wasn't there and she wasn't at home, she was somewhere between her house and the gym, and somehow she didn't make it there. My mind wandered to the worst-case scenarios, so I rushed back to my car and slowly made the drive home to see if I could spot anything. I didn't see her car in a ditch or anything like that, which eased my mind. I called her when I got back to see where she was, but she didn't answer. I felt completely helpless. In my mind, my wife was being held captive in someone's basement, and there was nothing I could do about it. I waited for about an hour, and then she walked in the front door. She was still in her workout clothes as if she had gone to the gym when I knew that she hadn't. I asked her where she was and she told me she was at the gym. Obviously I knew that she was lying, I just didn't know why. I explained the situation to her and told her that I didn't see her at the gym and I was worried. She played it off like she didn't understand why the worker said I wasn't there, suggesting that there might have been a shift change while she was there. She told me that she was in the sauna for a while which might explain why I didn't see her there. The excuses she gave made sense, but something was telling me not to believe them. I saw with my own eyes that she wasn't there. I was scoring around for her car, and I didn't see it anywhere in the lot at the gym. My wife was lying to me, and my paranoia started taking full control of my brain. Later that night while she was asleep, I took it upon myself to find out the truth of what was really happening. I grabbed her phone and looked through it for any clues about where she was. I found that within seconds of opening her phone, she was with Joe. Their messages were all pretty tame. There were a few messages where they would tell each other they missed each other, but for the most part, it was them planning times to get together. They were hooking up a few times a week. Apparently, Joe worked from home while Heather didn't, so whenever she would leave my wife would head over to their house. I was completely heartbroken by what I saw, especially when I put the pieces together that their affair started while I was home recovering from my injury and feeling very bad about myself. It seemed like everything I thought about my relationship with my wife was wrong, and it was devastating to learn that. I knew that I needed to divorce her, but while I looked over the text messages, I didn't think it was sufficient evidence to prove that there was an affair. It seemed like there could be something going on but there wasn't anything in there that explicitly mentioned they were having sex. I needed to see it for myself and get some kind of proof. I did a quick search online for some kind of app or something I could download on my wife's phone to be able to track her. It sounds awful, but I needed to know when she was actually going to the gym and when she was going to Joe's house. My intention was just to follow her there and make sure I could get the proof I needed. I found one and got it set up so next time she told me she was going to the gym, I could be ready. After two days, my wife told me that she was going to the gym. I waited for about half an hour after she left and checked the app. She was not at the gym. I quickly finished up what I was doing with my work, and I made my way over to the address she was at. I walked to the front door and looked at a piece of mail to see that it was Joe's house. My wife's car was in the driveway, so I knew that I was going to be possibly witnessing one of the worst things I could imagine. I realized that I couldn't get into the house, so that posed a bit of a problem for me. I needed to see what was happening, so I did something a little bit illegal. I opened an electric bill belonging to Heather, and I got her phone number from that. I called her and explained everything. She was skeptical at first, but she agreed to head right over to see for herself if I was right about everything. I hid the electric bill in my car, 
so they would never know that I had to open it to contact her, and I waited for her to arrive. As soon as I saw her, I walked to the door with her. When she opened the front door, the chain lock was up. That immediately made her suspicious. That was never up, so she thought it was him trying to keep her out of the house. We snuck around to the back door, and she let us both in through there. When we got in, we could hear music playing from the bedroom, and I had a sinking feeling in my stomach. All of the signs pointed to my wife having an affair, but there was still part of me that had the slightest bit of hope that I was misreading things. Of course, that wasn't the case. Heather led me to the bedroom where she opened the door to see my wife and Joe together. They were both surprised to see us there. Heather ran up to Joe and started hitting him on the head with her purse. I couldn't blame her for reacting that way. My wife covered herself as quickly as she could and tried to explain herself to me. She told me that it just happened while they were at the gym. She tried to tell me it was the first time anything like that had happened and she regretted it. I told her that I knew she was lying and there wasn't any point and to expect to get divorced. She still hadn't found a job since being laid off from hers during the pandemic. She had gotten quite comfortable with not working, which had been a point of contention in our relationship in the past, but I made enough for us to still live comfortably. She tried to convince me to change my mind about it, right there while we were standing in the doorway of the room she was just cheating on me in. I told her that my mind was made up and I was going through with it. She was angry about that, and as I was walking away, she told me that she wasn't attracted to me anyway, and that I couldn't ever really satisfy her. I knew the second part was a lie, but the first part of what she said stung. I had my insecurities about how I looked after the injury and hearing somebody who was supposed to love you say it wasn't a blast. Heather and I both ended up divorcing our partners, and we wrote letters to each other's divorce attorneys, explaining everything that happened since we didn't have any photographic evidence. I kicked my wife out of my house, and she ended up moving in with Joe. They were apparently in love with each other, and planned on spending the rest of their lives together. They both got married a few months after the divorces were finalized, which I know now that they regret because they're in the process of divorcing. Heather and I talk to each other on occasion, and we laugh about how dumb of a decision it was for them to remarry so quickly. From everything I gathered, Joe ended up cheating on my ex-wife with another woman from the gym. That's what sparked their divorce. I'm happy knowing that my ex-wife was forced to get a job and spend a good portion of her earnings paying for two separate divorce attorneys. OP, your injury sounds like it was a lot for you to handle, and it seems like your wife wasn't there for you throughout it. You were vulnerable in telling us about your insecurities with your body after everything, and it seems like you expressed that to your wife too. For her to know that and make you feel the way that you did is awful, especially telling you at the end of the relationship that she cheated on you because of that. I think her true colors were clear when she adamantly lied about being at the gym when you knew that she wasn't. You caught her in the lie and yet she still held to it. Obviously, I doubt she would confess to what she did at the time, but the fact that she kept up a lie like that says a lot about her. It's good that both you and Heather divorced your partners, and I think it is kind of funny that they both got married and divorced so quickly. Joe cheating on your wife is karma for her. I can only hope that Joe gets something back at him sometime soon. And I agree, your wife had to pay a lot of money for two separate divorce attorneys in a very short amount of time, and that is pretty awful for her. I hope you are taking time to take care of yourself again and feel comfortable in your skin. I know going through something like this with your partner is pretty disheartening, but I do wish that you will find someone in the future who will value you and respect you in a relationship. Now, let's move on to our next story. My girlfriend and I met when we were both fresh out of high school and working in the same grocery store over the summer. We were both going to college out of state, but we lived just one town over from each other. We got to talking while we worked there, and we hit it off. I was a bit of a late bloomer when it came to dating, so I didn't realize that she had feelings for me when she did. She ended up asking me out because I was clueless about her feelings toward me. Of course, I said yes. I thought she was amazing, and I jumped at the first opportunity I had to go out with her. We continued dating through the rest of our college years, occasionally going to visit the other person on weekends or breaks when we had the chance. But we looked forward to those summer breaks when we could spend three months with each other virtually uninterrupted. 
She was my first love, and I was completely convinced at the time that she and I were going to be together forever. I know now that was just childish naivety, but I was hopeful. The main reason she went to the university that she did was because they had an incredible study abroad program. I knew that in the summer between her junior year and senior year, she was planning on going to London. I knew that from the moment I met her because she was very excited about it. That summer, I got to see her for about a week before she flew out to attend her summer program. We still talked often because I wanted to hear all about her travels, so we FaceTimed and texted each other whenever we had the chance. I was happy for her, but I missed her like crazy. I was complaining about it to my parents, and they could see how upsetting it was for me, so they offered to pay for a plane ticket to go see her. My girlfriend was excited about it when I told her, and we planned the perfect time to get together so she could show me some of her favorite spots in the city, and we could spend time together. She told me about a lot of the friends that she made while she was in her program. Of course, I didn't know every single one of her friends, but from what I gathered it didn't seem like anything was going on. A couple of weeks before I was set to take my trip, she was pretty much MIA in terms of phone calls or responding to my messages. She would check in now and then just to tell me that she was fine, but she wasn't giving me anything else. I had a bad feeling about it initially, thinking that maybe something was going on and she was trying to ghost me. But that didn't seem like something she would do, so I wasn't sure. When it got closer to my date of departure, she was communicating with me a lot more. She told me that she had been stressed out with class stuff and was sort of in a bad place because of it. I felt bad for assuming anything else was going on. I flew to London, and she met me at the airport to take me back to the flat she was staying in. She introduced me to a lot of her friends. The only person that she introduced me to that I didn't know about beforehand was a guy that we'll call Dan. I hated being this way, but seeing a guy that I knew was probably hanging out with my girlfriend without me automatically raised some red flags. My girlfriend was beautiful, and in my eyes, anybody would have been foolish not to want to be with her. However, I quickly picked up on the fact that he was dating another one of my girlfriend's friends, who we will call Katie. The two of us went sightseeing the first day that I was there. She showed me some incredible places, and we went to some lovely cafes and bookstores. The second day that I was there, we went on a double date with Dan and Katie. There was this fun arcade that we went to, and afterward, we went for a walk in a park. Katie and I actually had a lot in common when it came to the video games at the arcade. It was a place that she suggested we all go to because she loved it, and my girlfriend and Dan weren't really into things like that. So, it might have been a little bit of my fault in this, but I spent the majority of that time talking to her about the games. Dan and my girlfriend were sitting at the table together, and I happened to look over at them at one point to see them smiling and laughing at each other, with Dan reaching for her hand. It immediately brought back all the suspicions that I had. When everything was over, I asked my girlfriend about it. She told me that it was nothing and he was just making a joke and he was a touchy person. That didn't make me feel any better. We ended up getting into an argument about it because I felt like she was lying to me. It was difficult because we only had a couple more days together in London before I had to go back to the States and get ready for my senior year. After that, we wouldn't see each other until the winter break. I could tell that she was still upset with me in the morning, but we apologized and decided that we wanted to make the best of the time we would have together. I didn't see Dan or Katie again for the rest of the time I was in London. I got back home and I was bummed with how everything went while I was with her. I went back to school for the first semester of my senior year and things seemed to be normal between us. We were communicating over the phone like we always did during the semester. I saw her again over the winter break and things were different between us. She was cold and less open to me than she normally was. By that time, I wasn't thinking about the argument we had and I genuinely didn't understand why she was acting the way that she was. Whenever we would talk, it would always be about things not related to us. Specifically, she would always tell me about things that were going on in the group chat she had with the people that she met in London. I know she adored all of them, and she considered them to be very close friends. She was contemplating moving to London after graduation and getting an apartment with them. I spent New Year's Eve with her, and I noticed that she didn't want to be around me much. We were at a party at a bar in her hometown, and around midnight, 
I went to find her to kiss her when the ball dropped. Just as I was about to kiss her, she turned her face away from me, so I kissed her cheek. I was surprised, but I didn't make a big deal out of it. When we got back to her house after everything, I asked her about it. My gut was telling me that she did it because she didn't want to commit to me for a year, and it was some superstition that she had. She made it seem like I was looking into it too much. I slept over at her house that night, but I couldn't get the idea of it out of my mind. We had been drifting apart for some time, and I didn't want to lose her, but it felt like I was. It was about 3 a.m., and I couldn't sleep. I was just lying in bed next to her, and I saw her phone buzz on the nightstand showing Dan's name. From what I understood, they didn't talk to each other much aside from group settings. Seeing him reach out to her was confusing. I quietly grabbed her phone and read the message. He wished her a happy New Year's and said that he was sorry for not being her midnight kiss. That prompted me to look through their other messages, where I saw that they had been exchanging pictures and videos of each other for months. From some of the context, I clearly understood that they had been sleeping together while she was in London. I knew that I was right to be suspicious about what was happening with Dan. My gut told me something was going on with them, and my girlfriend lied to me when I asked her about it. I didn't see any way that I could continue being with her after what happened, and it didn't seem like she wanted to make it work either. I sent myself screenshots of their messages so I would have them, and I left. I didn't tell her about what I was doing, and I didn't give her any heads up that I knew about her and Dan. I just left and didn't tell her anything. She was going to be wondering what happened for a little while. I didn't talk to her for the rest of the break, even though she messaged me a few times wanting to get together before we left for our final semesters. I went back to school and continued ignoring her. I could tell from her messages that she was hurt by my completely ghosting her, which I was thankful for. She hurt me, and I wanted her to be hurt back, but I also wanted to do something else. I didn't feel like it was enough to get back at her for how she hurt me. I stewed on it for a while and eventually decided to reach out to her friends from London and let them know what my girlfriend had been doing with Dan. I threw all of them in a group chat, and I explained everything, sending screenshots of the evidence to them. I didn't respond much in the chat, but it blew up with all of them expressing how shocked they were and telling me how sorry they were for me. On top of that, they kept mentioning how there were signs all along, but they didn't want to believe it. Dan's girlfriend Katie was in that chat, and she was talking about how she was going to make him regret what he did. Surprisingly, they didn't kick me out of the group chat. I was in it, and they kept checking in with me to see how I was doing. They seemed like a solid group of people. From what they told me, they all stopped talking to my girlfriend because they couldn't stand her for what she did. My girlfriend reached out to me after she found out what happened and told me that I had no business going through her phone. Her main point was that I invaded her privacy and ruined her plans for after graduation. She couldn't afford to live in London on her own, so she had no way of making that dream come true. Katie got her revenge on Dan by sleeping with his brother. Normally, I wouldn't condone behavior like that, but it was pretty funny. Not only did she break up with Dan, but she potentially ruined his relationship with his sibling. I guess that was one way to get revenge. Now I have graduated, and that was a couple of years in the past. I'm not close friends with any of those girls from that group chat, but we're still friendly. I do know that if I ever end up in London again, I can hang out with a couple of them, and we can have a nice little reunion. OP, I'm so sorry I had to go through all of that. It seems like your girlfriend might have been feeling guilty when she wasn't talking to you for that week before you arrived. I could understand if she was feeling panicked about the possibility of you coming into contact with Dan. Their demeanor in the bar definitely clued me into the affair they were having. They must have just forgotten that they were there with their partners and were acting like it was a date. I always think it's interesting when people take their partners on double dates with their affair partners. There must be some level of false confidence involved that makes them think that they can get through that without any signals. It's good that you cut her off completely. It's better to do that than try to give her a chance to sway your mind to stay with her. I'll never understand why somebody who is unhappy in a relationship will stay in it and cheat rather than do the right thing and end the relationship before moving on. Breakups are tough, but they are worlds better than being cheated on. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. 
If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.